On this day in 1974, the Spanish Carmelite, Saint Maria Maravillas of Jesus, died. As she lived her life, as she spoke, that is, with great simplicity and serenity, so were her final moments on earth, peacefully falling asleep in the Lord. Born in Madrid on November 4th, 1891, her devout mother named her after Our Lady de, de las Maravillas, Mother of the, Our Lady of the Marvels. She was a patroness of the area of Spain they were from in the south. Her father, a fervent Catholic and humble man, was the Marquis of Pidal and the Spanish ambassador to the Holy See. Now, little Maravillas heard with pleasure the lives of the saints that her maternal grandmother would tell her. And at the age of five, she was already in the state of reason. She already reached the age of reason, cognizance. She was touched by the example of St. Agnes, who consecrated herself to Christ by the vow of chastity. And Maravillas decided to do the same. So at five years old, she was already making a vow of chastity. In 1539, Mother Maravillas wrote to her confessor. She says, I received the grace of a vocation at the same time as the use of reason. And I perceived the Lord's call so clearly that I was then as determined to be a contemplative as I am today. I have never known the slightest shadow of a doubt about this vocation during my entire life. Wow, that's a special grace. We're dealing with a saint here. After the death of her father in 1913, with the permission of her mother, Maravillas entered the Carmel of the Escorial near Madrid on October 12, 1919. Also in the year 1919, and of importance to our story, on the Hill of the Angels in the geographic center, the geographic heart of Spain, 14 miles from Madrid, King Alphonsus XIII unveiled a monumental statue of the Sacred Heart. King and divine protector of the Spanish people. At first, the crowds and the people's piety were impressive. They came in great numbers. But in the months which followed, the monument was little by little abandoned to the point of becoming a deserted place, overrun by weeds. It became necessary to make an effort to climb the hill, and many turned towards more accessible pilgrimage sites. Well, shortly after her novitiate, Sister Mara, Maria Maravillas heard the appeals of the Lord who urged her to found a Carmel on the Hill of the Angels. This is what she said. In this place, she's reporting our Lord's words. In this place, I want you and the other souls chosen by my heart to build a house in which I will take my delight. My heart needs to be consoled. I want this Carmel to be the balm that dresses the wounds opened in me by sinners. Spain will be saved by prayer. And we might add, by the prayer of Carmelites, as she's always been saved through them. Mother Maravillas confided to Mother Josefa, the foundress of the Carmel of the Escorial, and the latter's surprise was great when a short time thereafter... Mother Rosario of Jesus, the surprise, came to share a similar confidence. She too had received a locution from our Lord for this very same end. Faced with this double appeal from our Lord, Mother Josefa sought the advice of prudent priests, as all good Carmelites are wont to do. All gave their approval to the project, which the Bishop of Madrid likewise welcomed with great interest. So on May 19, 1924, the first four sisters destined for the foundation moved into a small house at Getafe, very close to the hill, while waiting for the new monastery to be built. On the 30th, Stamaravias made her perpetual profession there. Shortly thereafter, Despite her reluctance, she was named prioress. 
So as her vow of virginity was precocious, so was her role as superior, and she would remain prioress for the rest of her life, 48 years. On October 26, 1926, she moved with her sisters into the convent on the hill near the Monument of the Sacred Heart. In 1931, however, the social agitation due to communism began in Spain that would end in a bloody civil war, the Spanish Civil War. Even though convents and churches in Madrid were burned with Mother Maravillas, the community serenely proceeded with its life. Underline that word, serene. That serenity is flowing from mother. She would intensify their prayer and increase their sacrifices. She wrote, When they ask me if we are concerned, if we are afraid, it seems to me terribly strange. I think that anything that can happen to us is of so little importance that only the glory of God is important. Seeing so many offenses against God penetrates me to the deepest part of my soul. And she talked about it lighting a fire there to undo all the evils going on in the world. Mother Maravillas. And on May 1st, 1936, an armed band tried to attack the monastery by climbing the walls. The mayor of Getafe made haste to warn the Carmelites. Mother Maravillas received him in the parlor. This man, nicknamed the Russian, not without cause, because he was a militant communist, he came to Mother. Mother maintained a serenity and presence of mind that impressed him. As a result, he helped the sisters as best he could. They're enemies. Communism doesn't like convents like this. And here he is in front of this serene woman, and he's captured by her to protect her. Soon, fighting would take place on the hill. Under the whistling of shells and the pattering of machine guns, the sisters heard of the arrest and death of many religious could it be us? Maybe we'll be next. Mother suggested to her daughters that they return to the shelter of their families. All of them, however, remained without hesitation at the monastery. They weren't going to leave their Eden. And that was mother. They were welcoming martyrdom. They wanted to be like those 16 Carmelite nuns in Compiègne that would bring an end to this war. And on July 22nd, the militiamen, that was a name of given to one of the armed groups, enjoined the Carmelites to leave the hill. It seems the crown of martyrdom was not destined to be theirs. They were received with open arms by the Ursulines in the Getafe. Through a skylight, they were able to see the hill, and sadly, with the help of a crane, the militiamen toppled the statue of the Sacred Heart while shouting out horrible blasphemies. The nuns' sorrow was profound, but they maintained their peace with Mother Maravillas as their guide. Now, as the Carmelites' honor guard over the monument of the Sacred Heart had lost its basis for existence, they took refuge, uh, refuge in Madrid. There, thanks to an underground priest and devoted lay people, they received the Holy Eucharist from time and were able to hide. But actually, Madrid was a hot spot, not a very safe place to be. One evening, men came in search of the sisters and searched their premises. The leader confronted Mother Maravillas with a pistol in his hand aimed at her. This man, who had come in like wild animal and who would later admit to having killed more than 2,000 people personally in a clandestine prison, was little by little won over by Mother's peace and serenity and kindness. He ended in telling her, Mother, 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 you and I can't get angry with each other. And the men left without taking the sisters prisoners, contrary to what they'd previously decided. Here's a saint for our time, one who can keep us calm and confront the worst of enemies. Soon it was necessary to evacuate Madrid too, and Mother arranged, not without trouble, for the Carmelites to 
not to be separated. They crossed into France and arrived at Lourdes on September 16, 1937. Exhausted but burning with love for Jesus and Mary, they remained there 24 hours before returning to Spain in a zone in which the church was free. They lived in a convent not far from Salamanca. In this oasis of greenery, they enjoyed precious rest. Mother was occupied with the work of restoring the premises with prayer and with the care of her daughters. Exteriorly, nothing could be seen but her even disposition, her constant serenity, and her attention to all. Very important for our time. To we need people who are calm in the face of great dangers. In 1939, the Civil War was ending. The sisters had had ended. The sisters returned to the Hill of the Angels. The monument was demolished. The convent was uninhabitable. Nevertheless, mother and her sisters settled there, at least a few of them, and started the build up. Peacetime brought back with it, uh, peacetime brought with it a remarkable upsurge of vocations, the fruit of sufferings offered during the difficult years. The founding, founding and restoring of some nine Carmels in Spain and one in India would follow one after another an astonishing pace over the next 20 years. So here's a saint for us today. One of Mother Maravillas' greatest lessons for us in these times is the need to remain calm and serene even in the face of the greatest dangers because God can work with and through a calm soul to overcome great evils. Whereas those who give way to fear fall into many troubles and the devil, he can smell fear a long ways away and he can come and take advantage of it and get you to do the dumbest things. Watch out for fear. Never let fear be your motive. Blessed Mother Maravilla loved to say, the only thing we must do is allow ourselves to be led by the most loving providence of God you will see how everything works out. Have great confidence in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.